So uh, good afternoon, welcome to the first case study which we're going to be looking at over the next five minutes. Um, I'm going to be looking at a case, case study for OCRB Geography GCSE and the one we're going to look at is it talks about a coastal landscape and its landforms um, and we're going to be looking at the Dorset coastline, uh, sometimes called the Jurassic coastline because of the rich geology that's found there, uh, all the rocks laid down up until uh, the Jurassic period. Um, and sometimes just called the Isle of Purbeck, which is a smaller part of that coastline. Now the coastline is a 95 mile stretch of coast, um, predominantly based in Dorset in South West, West England. So the case study has got five parts and I'm gonna go through those five parts. Uh, five parts are location, secondly, the landforms, thirdly, the processes at work, fourthly, human management, and fifth, the uh, other human issues around the area of coastline. So what I would do is I'd listen to what I'm gonna say and maybe pause after each uh, section and you can do that as you wish. So section one is an introduction and like I've talked about really, 95 mile stretch of coastline is a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the unique nature of the geology. Um, it's an area that's visited by maybe up to a million people every year, um, rich in uh, geological landforms and it's been rebranded by Dorset County Council mostly as the Jurassic Coastline, an area of southwest UK. So that's the area we're talking about. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, places like Old Harry, Swanage, Lyme Regis, Durdle Door, a place renowned for its tourism. So that's really the introduction. I'm going to move on to part two. And part two um, asks the students to look at all the landforms within a certain area. Now we can pick many landforms um, from west to east. Uh, we're going to start with probably the most, one of the most famous uh, places in the UK. And we're going to look at um, Old Harry Rocks. So in the Bay of Swanage, just north of Swanage, uh, is a peninsula of chalk and the chalk sticks out because it's more resistant to waves and the surrounding clay, which is what makes Swanage Bay. And that, um, the headland of chalk, there's a number of different erosional landforms. The whole area is called the Foreland and within the Foreland there's Old Harry itself, which is a stack. And the stack is left behind when an arch has already collapsed. Um, and after the stack, there's gonna be a stump. Um, what happened about 100 years ago, there was another stack there called Old Harry's Wife, who sadly fell into the sea. Now the way they're created at this headland is um, hydraulic action and abrasion from the sea. It erodes away, attacks the faults in the chalk. It's quite faulted chalk when it's laid down as a sedimentary rock. Um, it erodes the chalk and eventually a cave is formed. The caves connect to form an archway and then weathering occurs as well. And eventually the weight of the arch at the top collapses. We have a collapsed arch, materials then washed away, transported down coast. We're left with a stack. The stack then is continued to be eroded at the base. Uh, a stump is formed and eventually a wave cut platform. So at the foreland, we have all the erosional features. Also along that coastline uh, would be, there's a spit down in Hampshire at the eastern edge of this area. Um, the spit is called Hurst Castle Spit, uh, and spits occur due to longshore drift and deposition. And what happens is when an area of coastline changes shape, the material is carried down um, via longshore drift, swash and backwash. It's then deposited as the coastline changes shape. And over a long period of time, a bit of land extends out from the existing bit of coastline to form a spit. At the end of this spit is a castle built by Henry V called Hurst Castle. And the spit itself is about a kilometer long. Um, and it's now quite stationary. Um, and it's been, human management's been done on it to stabilize it a bit more. There's other landforms. Um, there's Chesil Beach, which is in fact a tombolo. And it's a, shing a ridge of shingle, which has been pushed in as sea levels risen like a beach bar and then Longshore Drift has attached it to the Isle of Portland, um, so it's a tombolo. And then also Swanage Bay would be another landform. Uh, bays uh, always have sand at the back of them and they, the reason there's deposition is that the waves are defracted into the bay and therefore it's low energy. Um, we could go on and on, there's a variety of landforms. Um, part three of the case study asks you to talk about different, pro learn about different processes. So there's the processes of erosion, um, which I've talked about a few, the process of deposition, uh, the processes of transportation, sortation, traction, um, solution, 
uh, and something else, suspension. Um, there's process of weathering occurring in the back of the base, so even for example back of Lyme Regis, a lot of slumping from weathering. Um, the climate has got a lot to play, so in that part of the country there's not a lot of freeze thaw, uh, summer temperatures 21 degrees, winter temperatures may be down to 3 degrees, but they do get some big storms from the southwest, um, which has a bit of an impact. Uh, the fourth thing we're going to look at is management. So you might want to pause here, there's already been quite a lot of info. And um, management, if we pick Lyme Regis, which is at the western end of this case study, um, they've got an issue. Lyme Regis got a population of four or 5,000, but in the 90s, and the government had decided to spend somewhere in the region of 25, 30 million pounds to protect Lyme Regis. Um, the reason they had to do that was when there was a, there was a, pra, a harbour wall built called the Cobb in 1750, and what that did was that stopped the longshore drift, which was, um, depositing material in front of Lyme Regis, the cob stopped that material being deposited and the material moved on down coast, meaning that Lyme Regis was at risk. So the government decided to do something. They did many things. They used both hard and soft engineering. Um, so they built, they reshaped the harbour wall, the cob. Um, they imported thousands of tons of shingle and sand. I can't remember the top of my head, 30 or 40,000 tons of both. Um, they rebuilt Lucy's jetty at one end of Lyme Regis to trap the sand and shingle in place. They used riprap or rock armour at the edge of the cob to dissipate the energy of the waves. And they built a new promenade which encouraged tourism um, and on top of the seawall. And then they also, one of the things they did was they put in uh, 1,150 iron piles, kind of like big rods, three metre high steel into the, the clay um, at the back of Swanage, um, not Swanage, Lyme Regis Bay, because it was slumping. So they did that bit like when you put a stick through a burger to keep it all together. They did that at the back of Lyme Regis. Uh, cost a lot of money, um, but potentially worth it. It's called the gateway to the Jurassic Coast. So that's a bit about Lyme Regis. The final part of the case study just asks for um, human uses. So for example, um, quarrying is really popular within uh, the Isle of Purbeck because of the limestone. Um, and of course, tourism. Half a million visitors to Lulworth Cove, a million visitors to Swanage, really, really important industry. And with tourism, of course, comes positives and comes lots of negatives. So there you are. There's a coastal case study for you. I hope that's helpful. I'll be back later. Thank you.